Okay, would you rather practice to this? Or this? Have you ever looked at all the gear musicians use and wonder, how does it all work? My name's Dustin and my family and I are setting out on a quest to inspire both adult and kid musicians to create new sounds together and learn all about what it takes to produce great music. We'd like to invite you along on the journey as we explore the gear professional studios, musicians, and hobbyists use to create their art. We'll take a close-up look at the gear and ask, What's this button do? Hello and welcome to What's This Button Do? I'm your host, Dustin. And today we're going to be taking a look at a plugin that absolutely revolutionized how I handle home recording, mixing, mastering, and, and really creating my own music at home. Uh, a few years back when I started to record, I realized that there was a massive problem. And any of you who have had uh, tried to set up your own apartment or home studio know that there's a lot of things that are fairly easy to do. You can record vocals very easily. You can record guitar and bass, especially with new things like what we've talked about in previous episodes, the Universal Audio Oxbox, Boss Waza 2 Bass plugins. There's all sorts of ways to record guitar directly into your computer. Keyboards have always had a pretty easy interface to be able to record into computers. Um, so most of the instruments that you would play are fairly simple to record and create music with. But there is a vital instrument that really just has not had a lot of great solutions, and that is the drum kit. For years, I, I tried uh, MIDI drum kits that were built into keyboards, and those were fine, but they sounded electronic. If you were producing EDM music or, or electronica, that was fine, but it just was no substitute for a real drum kit. And there were several plug-in options that would create little cool drums. And, and that was neat. It was fine. You could do some neat things. And it was great for creating a backing track or for starting music. But most producers would tell you if they had a home studio, once they use that, they still had to like record some music and then send it out to somebody or, or take it to another studio that could actually have a full drum kit in it to be able to really record the music. And a few years ago, I stumbled across this program by a company called TuneTrack, and it was called Easy Drummer. And it was pretty fascinating. You could, you could buy this program, you could open up some uh, uh, drum kits, you could have all sorts of different drum kits and, and record drums. And you know what? It sounded pretty good. But it was still kind of stale. It was still basic drums. There was nothing really fancy that you could do. And, and to really produce and mix and master, and especially if you wanted to get outside of the box and use like studio preamps to warm them up or compression, it just wasn't the same. It still wasn't achieving that ultimate goal. But then along comes TuneTrack with a new program called Superior Drummer. And Superior Drummer absolutely changed everything. It took that simple product that they had made an easy drummer and took it to the ninth level and turned it into a true drum mixing and mastering kit. Now, I know you're looking at me and you're saying, hey, Dustin, like all your previous episodes have been about guitar and studio building. Yes, absolutely. But this show isn't just about that. I want this show to really help you find a way to create your own music at home. If you're just a solo artist trying to write and create, playing along to a click track is never going to give you the feel and the groove and the excitement that you can get with playing along with real drums. And so I wanted to take it today's episode to really dive into Superior Drummer and show you why I think Every home musician, every recording artist, everyone who does, does any recording on their own without a drummer in the room should invest in Superior Drummer. I genuinely believe it is one of the most vital tools that I've ever used. But I can talk about it till I'm blue in the face. That doesn't really matter. Let's actually go into the computer, take a deep dive in it, and really look at all the cool details and show you what you can do with the program. All right, join me over there. We'll see you in a second. All right, let's dive into Superior Drummer. Now, when you first open the program up, this is what you're gonna see. If you just get the core pack, you're gonna see your initial drum kit. I love the way the GUI interface on this is absolutely beautiful. Um, and it'll just default to this basic kit. So you've got your kick drum, you got just all your basic symbols and everything set up here. 
What's really cool is just right away, the second that it loads up, you can come in here and you right click on the different drums and you can see just out of the box, it's got like, I think 25 different kick drums, each with its own sound. And these are all high def recordings. So you can kind of dial in the sound that you want from that. You can even add other instruments. You can see all these little blank areas here. These are all instruments that they recorded. So you can add in your own little mix here and create your own custom kit however you want. And then as you expand, now I'm just showing you the initial setup. I've got several of their expansions. And with all the expansions, you get a lot more options. So you can even come in and try to find other instruments that you want. If you search through your instruments, you can scroll through and I can pick symbols and I can scroll through every symbol that I've got from all the different packages and load a symbol from any single package that I want to do in here, which is really, really handy as well. So the more you grow your library, the more things that you can throw into here. So it really is just this ultimate drum kit maker. Um, but what I'm so impressed by is these are all real drums being recorded. And when they record, they actually record in 11.1. So now that the world has kind of gone to a Dolby Atmos type setting, these drums you'll actually be able to do in a Dolby Atmos environment and create a surround sound effect with the drums. And I'm going to show you how to do that in a few minutes because I think it is the coolest feature. And I haven't found any other drum machine that can truly do what this can do. Um, so I'll kind of show you that. But what's also neat is because they, they mic all of these in real rooms, when you buy an expansion kit, what you're actually getting is expansion kits recorded in different rooms so you can create a different room environment. So like Rooms of Hansa, this is actually in a really small vocal booth where they set up the kit. So everything sounds a little bit tighter, a little bit deader in the room. So it affects the way that the mics actually picked up the sound in it. You can see it's a little smaller kit, but a much, much tighter, much cleaner sound. And then they even have different musicians come in and record on these. So you can come in and see, okay, here's the kit that he used when he recorded. Here's this kit and here's the different versions of it. So you can swap it out to different kit setups that are already pre-programmed. And again, just like all the others, you can come in and change your kit however you want to and create your own customized kit. And then you can save them as files so you can create your own different uh, defaults that you mix to and then have them recallable uh, in a heartbeat so you can have hundreds of different drum kits that you like. If you have your metal drum kit and your blues drum kit and your rock drum kit, you can just call them back in a second and all your settings will be saved. Everything that you do is right there in front of you. So it's an absolutely, absolutely fantastic program from that regard. But where this really shines is when you are recording and mixing and mastering. So I'm going to dive in and show you that. One of the neatest things that is created in here is this groove kit. So when you purchase Superior Drummer, it comes preloaded with tons of grooves. I'll show you the original setup. So you have all these different swing, straight 4-4, four, four, swing 4-4 four, four, and halftime. And you can click on any single one of them and it'll just instantly play it so you can preview it, hear it, see if you like it, blah, 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 blah. Kind of create your own kit. And then whatever you like, if you find one that you like, you just drag it down in this little editor right there and that becomes the first section. And maybe we want to do two bars of that, so we create a couple bars in it. It's just a really, really cool way to create and mix and match drums. But then the program is so intuitive, you can actually take this MIDI up here and say, I want to find some stuff that really goes with this. It kind of has that same BPM, same feel, so that I can find some other things to go with it. Maybe I need a fill or I need a, a cool thing to go with it. So let's see, let's play, what does this sound like? All right, maybe uh, I want to try a little fill with it. So I'm gonna drop that little fill into here so that when I come back in there, create that fill sound. Just a neat way to do it. You can you can kind of mix however you want to create your own fills, but I like that it actually has a suggestion button here for you to be able to find similar things that work for you. And then even cooler, say we like this verse, we, we like the sound of this, it's pretty cool. We can drag this down here to the song creator, and then we can tell it, okay, we want to have like a 12 bar basic, maybe an AAA, let's see. Um, Let's do 
a bridge and a chorus kind of thing. And then it's got all of these suggestions here that you can mix and match. But what's really cool is you can just take this right down here into the editor. And now it's written a song for you. It's literally pulled grooves that it thinks will work together. And it's written a song. And you can listen to it. Here's a little intro. Okay, cool. It's kind of keeping all to the same time. And it's already set up a pre chorus and a chorus. So let's see what it does for our pre chorus. It's going to break it down. in there. Cool. And then to the chorus. But maybe we don't like that chorus. Maybe we don't like the way that that one sounds. It's got other suggestions up here for us of other choruses we can come in and drop in and change it up and mix it up, try something different that'll still fit that same rhythm. So it's super intuitive. Now, sometimes this doesn't work. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes the, the things that it throws in there may not work. It may not work perfectly, but it's a great way to get a starting block and to really get that foundation. And then you can tweak from there. I find this helps me when I'm sitting down to write guitar parts or vocals, I'll just come in here and I'll throw on a, a random beat and just see if it inspires me. You can change the tempo on it. You can lower it down. You can increase it up. You can do whatever you want to do. But you can literally kind of set it up to just inspire you and let it create. Or if you want to write a song, you can go in here and write a song. That's great too. The other thing that I love from an editing standpoint is you can come in here and you can click on it and you can change how hard and the velocity that you hit the different drums at. And then you can even go in and individually edit the individual hits, including the velocity, how hard. You can randomize them a little bit. You can quantize them. You can even give it a little bit of a random swing to it. So if I come in here and I go to the hi-hat, I can actually randomize how accurate that is and how much I'm hitting it and kind of swing those notes just a little bit so that it's not perfect. It gives it a more human sound without being completely offbeat where it's gonna throw you off when you try to play with it. So to add humanity to the drums, I haven't found a lot of kits that can really do that well. Superior Drummer nails it, where it creates this lifelike, realistic way of playing the drums. But if you're a person who likes to go in and hand program all of your drums, all you have to do is go in, create your own drum kit that you want, and then just go into the grid editor, and you can literally write your own track all the way across and tell it to hit when you want it to hit. So from the ground up, you don't have to use their pre-programmed beats. You could do whatever you want, create your own music, write it however you want. So from a versatility standpoint, it is the most versatile program. But the final step and the, the thing that I think no one really shows and they really don't talk about on any of the Superior Drummer um, website demos or anything is the mixing system in here. So I Okay, so now we've got a session of Pro Tools open here. I'm going to start off from a brand new track and show you how easy it is to create a massive drum kit experience. So what we're going to do is we're just going to open up a completely new project. We'll call it uh, an SD drum for what's this button do? All right, we'll do it in 48. We'll just create this track out here. All right, now this is how easy this is. And Follow with me, I'll explain why I'm doing everything that I'm doing. So we've got to make a few tracks here. We're going to do a new. We're going to, first of all, do two stereo master faders. Oops, I only did one. I'm going to do two stereo master faders. Okay, we got those. And then I'm gonna do two stereo auxes. Oh, I did it again. Now, 
Now, these are going to be what drives the whole thing. So our Stereo Master Fader, our initial one, is just going to be regular old Stereo Master Fader, nothing fancy there. The other Stereo Master Fader is going to be our Mix VCA. So we'll relabel it Mix VCA. And then all we've got to do is instead of doing the regular bus that it'll default to like bus three and four, is we're just going to mix this out to the mix bus. So we'll just change that to mix bus. Good to go. Easy peasy. All right. Then on our two VCA tracks, this is going to be our mix bus. and I mean, our two aux tracks, we're going to rename these our, our uh, mix bus and our drum bus. So we're going to have our mix bus. And our drum bus. And for those who have just started using uh, Pro Tools, this is a good way to start all your Pro Tools, Pro Tools sessions. So just to give you an idea, as you're creating, I always like to have these kind of going in. For your mix bus, your input is going to, of course, be mix bus. And then your output is that is going to go out to your bus one and two. So you just leave that kind of normal because that's going to your master bus. And then for your drum bus, you're gonna do the exact same thing, but you're gonna call this drum bus instead of mix bus. And then where it says out to the bus one and two, this is actually gonna feed out to your mix. And what I'm doing there for those who, I, I know some of you are Pro Tools experts and this is just boring for you, but I wanna fill everybody in because I, I assume some of you are new to this. What you're doing, your master bus is just the overall volume control for your entire track. And then your mix bus, what you're doing is, is anything that you send to the mix bus. So that's what this input is. Anything that you're sending to a thing called mix bus, which is this, is going to come in here. And then you can control the volume level of it before it gets sent out to the master volume. So if you want to make your items that are going to the mix bus a little louder than the drum kit, for instance, you can have this up a little higher, the drum kit a little lower, and then that way you can balance that out and create your, your uh, levels that way. So you'll have a drum bus, you'll have a mix bus all set up there, okay? Now, we're gonna need superior drummer in the mix. So that's really easy. We're going to go to create a new track and that new track is going to be an instrument track because we're doing, you know, to stereo. And you can do it as an audio track or an instrument track. It really doesn't matter. Um, I'll just call it uh, an audio track for the heck of it. So on this one, it's just going to default out like normal. No big deal here. Since it is an instrument, it doesn't really need an input. So you can take off the input because nothing's going to come into there. You're not feeding into that. Everything's going to be driven by the plugin itself. And it is going to output to, you guessed it, the drum bus because we want it all to go to the drums. Cool? That all makes sense? All right. If not, comment down below. I'll go back and kind of guide you through this. But then we have to do the plugin. So up here in your inserts or wherever you have your plugins on whatever DAW you're using, I just happen to use this. You're going to go into your instrument plugins, and I know I've got a ridiculous amount of them, but we're going to load in Superior Drummer 3. And then you're going to see what it looks like when it first comes up on the screen. This is kind of what we talked about earlier. Now I'm going to move this over a little bit just to give us a little bit more room here. And now we're back into that Superior Drummer program that I showed you earlier. So from here, if we just start playing around, you're going to hear the drums come through. And I can take the drum bus and let's let's hear, I'll just start a little groove here and I'll show you. Just play a random groove. I can take my drum bus then because it's all being fed into the drum bus and I can drop that down to make it quieter and boost up to make it a little louder. And then as it goes into the master bus, I can turn that down. So all of those will affect the volume that's going to them. Make sense? Easy peasy from here. Now, you could stop right here make your drums, program them, and you're good to go. Now you've got a drum track. But for anybody who does mixing and mastering, you know, sticking all your drums on one master file can be a bit of a pain. A, it eliminates 90% of the things that you can do because sometimes you want some compression on a kick drum, but you don't want it on everything else. You don't necessarily want that same level of compression on your hi-hats. You sometimes want to bring the, the kick drum down a little bit 
and bring maybe the ride or maybe you're doing some tom work and you want those toms to really shine. You want to be able to change the levels of all those different drums. And this is where plugins stereotypically have failed. But what Superior Drummer allows you to do is completely change that because they've added this little tab called the mixer. So if I go in here, when you first get into Superior Drummer, you'll see this. You'll see these outputs all set to output one and two, which means they're going to the main stereo outputs of your mixer. So they're just going to the, the main one and two channels, which is the output on every interface that you've got out there. We wanna change that because we don't want that. We want every single microphone that's in this kit to be sending out to its own channels. So what we're, all these are stereo inputs. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click on this output section and we're gonna change all these outputs. We're not gonna go one and two because one and two is the master, like I said. So we're gonna start at three and four. We're gonna change this to three and four, this to five and six, this to seven and eight, this to nine and 10. And we're just gonna keep going down the line. I know this takes a few seconds. It's, it's the boring part of all of this. But the reason that we're doing this is we're essentially assigning all of these different microphones that they've used and they've recorded all of this gear on. We're assigning those mixes out to individual outs. And by doing that, what we're gonna be able to do here in just a second is we're gonna be able to come back and get that music and, and add it in and mix it in our own Pro Tools session. Now, you notice I stopped here. It only goes to 32 outputs. You can, if there's multiple microphones that are, that are in here, most of these grooves, like I'll play that groove again and you can kind of see it. Most of these grooves when they're playing are just hitting certain tracks throughout there. They're not hitting everything. Now you notice when I hit play, you didn't hear any sound. That's because none of these are now outputting to one and two that are making noise. If I was to bring this back and go back to output one and two, you'd hear it. But because I've got it out, it's not going out to our master output. It's not going out to the mix, the master bus. It's going out to these superior drummer outputs. So we need to go get those. So what I've got here is I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 sets of outputs, right? So all we're gonna do is we're going to come back into Pro Tools itself and we're going to say, I wanna get 15 stereo aux inputs and I'm gonna throw them into my track. Now, I like to do them right after my Superior Drummer just so I know them and I'll usually change the colors so that they're all routed, blah, 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 blah. We won't waste all your time doing that. But all we have to do in order to do this is we come up here and on each input, you'll now see this plugin, Superior Drummer, and you can see all those outputs. So I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna assign each one of these to be a Superior Drummer output. There's my kick drum. There's the outboard, uh, or the outer kick drum mic. See how it's bringing all of those into the mix? And now some of these, this particular groove may not use some of these microphones and that's fine. What I like to do is go ahead and assign them all so that I've got them. And that way when I save this, then I will always have that ready to rock and roll. I won't have to go through and do this every time. Once you've done it once with the drum kit that you're using, it'll default to that. Now, if you switch drum kits and you create a whole new drum kit, you have to make a mixer for each individual drum kit that you do. But like I said, I mean, this whole thing is gonna take us maybe 10 minutes to do the entire thing. So it's not a super long process. But by doing this, and assigning all of these. Now we've got all of our inputs, but I don't want these to all go to the master bus. So what I'm gonna do is I'm also gonna come into each one of these outs and I'm gonna output them to our drum bus, not to the master output. So we're gonna put everything here to our drum bus. And that way our master bus and the drums is still controlling the overall level, but we can within that overall level, we can mix and master our drums individually we can send certain individual tracks out to outboard gear. We can apply individual plugins and compressors and 
maybe even echoes and effects, whatever we want to do to each individual track. And in doing that, you're allowing yourself so much more creative freedom. You're allowing yourself to be able to individualize each thing. And if you use automation at all, you can even automate certain parts of the song where maybe the kick drum gets super quiet, but then it fades in all of a sudden and does something really cool. Or maybe you have a, a rolling snare that is just, oops, I hit the wrong thing there. Uh, you have a rolling snare that's going to be really, really quiet and then get louder and louder and louder. Rather than having to program that in, you can just automate it and have that fade up. So like if I take the kicks all the way out, I can drop whatever I want to and just have those overhead. And these are those overhead mics over here. Maybe I just want it to be this for a little bit. And then I want to bring in the kick. overheads make a big difference this is such an important part of it that you have those overheads in there and then when the world goes to Dolby here very soon the other cool thing is, is you'll be able to do Dolby plugins here and spread those drums out so maybe you want to have it feel like you're on stage and maybe the hi-hats over here on the back right um, maybe you've got a rack tom over here maybe you've got the bass is off center maybe the bass is over here you can literally move all of your drums all around or if you're a drummer and you're making some drum heavy tracks Maybe you want it to feel like you're sitting there and that kit is surrounding you. So you can literally lay it out so that kit is fully in surround. So you're hearing it from the drummer seat playing that music. So the, the possibilities with this are limitless to what you can actually do to create something truly, truly amazing. And then being able to go in and actually add effects to it or uh, compressors, whatever you want to do, you can go through and do tons and tons of different options to it to really make things sound better to squash some of the sounds to raise that up in a mix you can do a, a limitless possibilities depending on the plugins that you have inside of your DAW and that is what makes Superior Drummer to me the most useful tool in, in the entire world of mixing mastering drums for people who don't have a drum kit so you truly could record an entire album without ever hiring a drummer to play drums for the album. You could create all of your drums digitally. I know a whole bunch of drummers just watched this and looked at me and were like, shut your mouth. It'd still never be as good as a real live drummer. You're right. It won't. It still won't have the character of a real life drummer. But by, by tweaking your grooves a little bit, by bringing in those, those grooves down here, and then actually going into the grid editor and randomizing that swing a little bit, creating something new. You can give it a little bit more lively feel to it. You can give the groove a little offbeat so it's not a perfect hit every time. You can do you can do it really terrible too. You can also take it where it gets completely wonky like that where it just doesn't work. Which is, you know, when your drummer's been drinking a little too much. You can do stuff like that too. But it gives you a lot of different options, a lot of different creativity and really allows you to make something that is truly unique. You're not just using a random MIDI track you bought online for five bucks. You can really make your own music and your own sound and your own feel using a MIDI kit, but creating something truly your own, but it sounds like you're playing it. It doesn't sound like you're programming it with a computer. And, and that has just blown me away. It, it makes Superior Drummer, in my mind, the best investment that you can get out there. So hopefully that gives you a great idea of what you can accomplish with Superior Drummer. Now, we were just touching on the initial kits that you get. You could see when I was scrolling through the menus, I've downloaded several of the kits and they put out a new one or two new kits a year. Um, and I, I highly recommend some of the newer ones, Hitmaker, Area 33, um, and the Rooms of Hansa, still one of my favorite of all time. They, they have some just amazing dead kits in there that are, are fantastic. So... Highly recommend playing with those. Give them a try. They've got free trials on their website. Uh, take a look. We'll put a little link down here uh, to their website so you can go check them out. And uh, just if you have any questions at all, want to know a little bit more about it, want us to cover something, please comment down below. Let us know. I'll be glad to go in depth on certain expansion packs or just on more details, features, and benefits, and how to do things in Superior Drummer if anyone's interested. Okay, so now it's time for today's episode of the 
Palin Petal Picking Challenge. Today, uh, I had Aria pick out a few items before she headed off to school so that I could record it while she was there. Um, we're going to be taking a look at some really interesting newer pedals um, and one of my favorite old overdrives. So join me over the pedal board and we'll take a look at that. All right, so for this week's Palin Pedal Picking Challenge, we are going to use the trusty Coward Daylighter with some uh, nice Lawler Gold Foils in here um, to play on a few new pedals that uh, Aria picked out. I had actually gotten in a new one from JHS and B Trunks. They were sitting on my desk. I hadn't even opened them yet. And of course, those two are two of the ones that she grabs this week. And then uh, she grabbed one of my favorite overdrive pedals, actually. So we're going to be looking at the JHS plugin, um, which is one of their new uh, fuzz plugins. Then we're going to be also adding in, I had the Vulture sitting there, so we just threw that on the board too. We're going to see what it's like because I haven't messed with it yet. seems like a really cool idea. It's basically a voltage starver, so you can use it with fuzz pedals and with other pedals to really just uh, have fun with the sounds. Then we're going to use the uh, Bondi FX Del Mar, one of my favorite overdrives of all time. Uh, just an absolutely, absolutely fantastic overdrive. It can go from transparent to some serious crunch. And then we're going to use the brand new Beatronic CB. I honestly, this is the first time I've plugged this in. So you're going to be learning about this as I do. It has a manual that's like this thick. So I know there's way more sounds than what we're going to make today. But uh, since we've had kind of a long episode, I want to just dive right into this and let you guys see what we're going to do. So I'm going to throw my headphones on and uh, we're going to try this out and see what happens. I'm going to move the mic over just a little bit here. Okay, so let's hear what the JHS plugin sounds like first. So we're gonna kick this on. Helps, helps if I actually turn up the attack here. Now I think this is gonna give us some like serious. Yeah, good distortion. If I have it low, reacts to the volume not pretty well too. That's just turning the volume knob on my guitar down. Good attack. All the way up attack. That's awesome. I think that with some humbuckers would be really good, nice and thick. With these, uh, these it gets a little bit trebly, but hey, it's pretty cool. I'm gonna turn it down a little bit here. That's awesome. Okay, let's try the voltage starver here. So that's a full power. With the vulture, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna try to get that in the screen here. Uh, with the vulture, when I turn, right around here we should, yeah, we're starting to hear some star. Let's try that. So it's kind of like biasing, you're, you're, you're starving that voltage down there and driving it, basically emulating what it would sound like if a nine volt battery was dying on you. Um, you're starving that voltage down, so it's making it work a little bit harder. Let's take it down even more. Yeah, you start to lose too much there. You need a little bit of voltage there. I like that. Get a little more attack. I'm pretty happy with that sound. Let's let's start there with our plug-in. Uh, here's the Del Mar. I think I've just got this. Yeah, I've got it set up for a, kind of a low driver. So you can hear, well, the reason I love the Del Mar is you get brightness across. It really does do a great job of picking up all the notes. And when you dig into it, you can push some crunch. You can really get it crunchy. That's, I've got the drive turned way down. Let's turn it up a little bit. And I'll let you guys hear what it sounds like. Here, I like I like the down arrow on that switch. A little more trebly, it just gives it a little bit more 
clean this to it. This muddies it up a little. So we're gonna go down. Love, I love that sound. But I think that's gonna be too much drive. Let's, uh, we're gonna turn it down to here to start with and we'll just kind of see what happens there. All right, now the fun one. Let's try this out. There is a lot of settings on the CV, so. We're on the chorus side now. Let's see here. That's a pretty subtle chorus. That's not as crazy weird as I thought it was gonna be. Let's try, what if we change it over here to the... Oh, there we go. That's a nice chorus, I like that. Take the depth back a little bit. I think this, yeah, there's the wet dry and the speed. Okay, all right. Let's go to the roto sound. Take the depth up. <laughs> Ramp down a little bit. <laughs> we can change the waveform. <laughs> okay, what's this harmony? Let's see. There's a lot of weird sounds in there. I could mess around with that all day. I don't want to bore you with that. Let's turn them all on and see if we can make something that sounds good. Okay, I already don't hate that. That's actually not bad. Okay, let's drive down a little bit. We're gonna bring the volume up a little. Oh man, that is an interesting sound. So I think that CB is gonna have a lot of fun in there. I really need to deep dive into the instruction manual and see, I'm sure there's some different ways to tweak that and get some different sounds than what we were dialing in there, but I'm excited about that one. But I think my favorite thing from all of that is that Vulture from JHS is going to be huge. I wanna try that on every fuzz pedal that I have and I'm gonna try it on some delays and other things uh, just to see how it works. I think it's gonna be very interesting. We'll probably cover that in an episode. In fact, you know what? I'll let you guys determine it. If you want me to see see me uh, take the Vulture and plug it into a bunch of different things that are not fuzz pedals, just comment down below. I will get some together and we'll have some fun. We'll try it out and see what happens. As always, I'd like to thank my friends over at Palin Music for supporting the show. Please, if you're in the area and can go check out any of their stores, make sure you go visit them in Joplin, Springfield, Kansas City, uh, St. Louis, they've got them everywhere. They're just, they're absolutely amazing. Um, and if you can't, just check out the link down below. Go visit them online and check out some of the fun things. I got to play a Marcus King uh, Orange Amp and a new Two Rock that they had over at the shop uh, in Joplin the other day. And it was insane. So please go in there, check them out if you get some time. And as always, please uh, hop onto Instagram if you happen to be on there and give us a follow at What's This, Dust What's this Button Do Dustin. Uh, we'd love to have you on there as well. We're going to be posting some links uh, to the... Uh, Palin Pedal Picking Challenge. I'll put a little link to that down below too. Um, if you uh, do a challenge, you have your family member check out some different pedals, maybe have them grab two or three pedals, 
don't tell them what you, how you want them set up. Just let them pick the order. You slap them down on the pedal board in whatever order they told you. And then try them out. See what sounds you can make. Have some fun with it. And enjoy yourself just like we do here. We're going to take some of our favorites. Uh, so make sure to tag us uh, at Palin Music. And also uh, tag me at What's This Button Do Dustin. And I'll be sure to check it out. And then we'll share some of our favorites on the socials. Well, thank you so much. Next week, we're going to be doing something a little different. We're going to be checking out how different strings can affect your guitar. I'm going to be restringing a really weird 12-string baritone from Martin Guitar and letting you hear what it sounds like. So please, come join us next week if you have some time. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day.